Hey guys, it's Steez. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, as you can see, uh, I don't know, well, as you can see, this is more of like a spooky, quote unquote, spooky setting um, for uh, the, this, uh, the second installment of my five part uh, conspiracy theory series. And um, this, uh, this, this one, the, that, and that, and that is the reason for um, the lighting in question. Um, I figured um, we would uh, go to the darkest room in my house and I put the flashlight to where it would kind of like give me a spotlight and we go from there and it would give you guys and I could paint you guys more of an eerie picture and it might even make this, the story slightly di more difficult for me to tell seeing as it happened to me personally but um uh once again I'm Steez uh S-T-E-E-Z-B-R-R-G-R-R -R -R, spelled just like my YouTube panel name if you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram um <clears throat> okay uh so the second installment of my five part conspiracy theory series begins right now, right after the one minute marker. Okay, so, <clears throat> the second, the second point that I'm going to make in this, in, in this five part, five part series is, um, uh, is something that is referred to as old hag phenomenon. And, um, there, there are other, uh, terms for it. Um, you know, uh, I didn't, uh, this is the, this is the term that, uh, that I familiarized myself with it. Uh, you know, I, I, I researched this term whenever I found out what it was. Whenever I was 12 years old, whenever it happened uh, for the first time to me personally, um, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, are any of you guys familiar with this? Like, uh, it, are, do you guys know what old, old, hag, old hag phenomenon is? Um, <clears throat> did you know what this was, excuse me, um, before um, I, I made this video and introduced the, the, introduced the topic to you? Oh, I love my ginger ale. <clears throat> but, um, no, so, um, I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, uh, you know, um. I'm 12 years old. Um, my family and I—I uh, I have a, a, a three-year-old, a three-year-old younger brother, and a, a six-year-old younger sister. And um, uh, we lived in, a, in an apartment in Bridge City, Texas. Um, if you wanna, uh, if you want to, Google Maps it, get an idea of where I am on this uh, on this plane that we live on. Um, uh, I'd be happy to. Uh, I'd be. You're more than willing to. Basically, but, uh, that's your choice. Go ahead if you want to, just to get paint paint yourself more of a picture of idea. Get, pay yourself more of a picture of where we are, and, and give yourself more of an idea of where we are on this on this on this place, crazy place that we live on. But um, so basically um, you know obviously um, it's a four bedroom house, seeing as like my mom and dad had a bedroom together, and the three of us kids has a bedroom, had a bedroom. Um, seeing as I was the oldest kid, um, you know my parents given like were giving me like giving me more like responsibility responsibility opportunities, um, and you know uh, letting me do like work around the house, uh, dishes, um. Getting my, you know, doing the laundry for the family for the week, um, things of that nature, you know, things that a typical 12 year old kid, uh, <clears throat> boy slash girl, it doesn't matter, gender, gender neutral, it doesn't matter, um, in between, whatever, um, you know, if that, if that's what, that's what a kid that age does, is, is what I'm trying to say, to make a long story short, <clears throat> but, um, so, uh, you know, I had a lot more responsibility, so I got the, uh, the biggest room in the house, and the, it just so happened to be the master bedroom, and it had a bedroom, it had a bathroom adjoined to it, like, you know, um, an ensuite bathroom, per se. Um, and, I, and I felt like, I was like, oh, I feel like such a grown-up, and I was so, I was very responsible at the time, and, um, you know, uh, going, th but, you know, at the same time, um, I was going through a lot of depression, and that was when 12 years old was, um, exactly, uh, not exactly, but, um, it was about the first time that, like, I actually, um, uh, began to deal with, uh, and to attempt to cope with depression on my own that led to cutting and therapy and things of that nature But um since we're in a dark spooky setting I figured it'd be kind of cool if I kind of like hit my medicinal marijuana with you guys for a second Okie dokie But no, um, so you know, uh, I had just recently been uh, Been ex just dealing with experiencing depression and uh, <coughs> if uh, the research that I've done and the people that I've, I've spoken with within the um, old hag old hag phenomenon experience <coughs> community excuse me um they've all uh, they've all said the same thing you know they were um they were doing it wasn't necessarily uh, family problems in some cases obviously it was I can I can only speak for the handful of people that I've spoken for I mean spoken with and that uh, from my own experience but um from the research that I've done and the people that I've talked to and from my experience, it's uh, the old hag, old hag, old old hag phenomenon um, occurs whenever um, a young teenager 
nine times out of ten a young teenager is dealing with depression, coping with anxiety, fear, frustrations, um, sexual identity, um, sexual preference. And in my case, you know, I was I was gay at 12 years old. I didn't necessarily know. I knew, but I wasn't necessarily um, familiar with the terminology and didn't know that I was a gay person. I just knew that I thought, I, you know, I thought boys were cuter than girls um, from the time I was in kindergarten up until obviously now. But um, that's beside the point. Um, I just kind of wanted to paint a picture of my frame of mind at the time and what I was going through at the time personally as, as compared to me as a person at the moment that you're watching this video, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, I'll just start with the first time that the the, um, the, the first time I experienced old hag old hag phenomenon, and um, you know I'm in I'm in the master the biggest bedroom in my house the master bedroom with the adjoin the adjoining bathroom. Um, uh, I always fell asleep watching I always fell asleep around 10, 10, 15, 10, 10 30. and at the time Chelsea Handler um, had just begun her show this was around 2004 this was around 2005 six seven era. era. And um, so, like, Chelsea Handler was huge. She had just started out, but from the beginning, I, I loved Chelsea Handler. I thought she was a sarcastic bitch, and I loved every fucking second of it. But, um, she, uh, you know, I always fell asleep watching her, the moral of the story. <clears throat> so, I'm falling asleep and laughing my ass off. Ross Matthews, Ross Matthews is there, you know, uh, uh, Natasha Leggero, jo Josh Wolf, uh, Sarah Colonna, Heather McDonald, you know, all the greats uh, that and uh, that are still great, not just because they're not on the Chelsea, on, on Ch on the Chelsea show, Chelsea lately, but because they're just great comics in general, but just that, that was an idea of like how I would wind down at night as compared to what happened th and when this event actually took place. But um, so what happened was the moment that I began to, um, I guess, uh, fall into like my deepest uh, form of sleep, deepest state of sleep, to, but also to where I'm still hyper aware of my surroundings. I'm not sure what realm of sleep that's, that's described as. Comment down below, let me know, please. I'm not really sure. But, um, uh, <clears throat> I just uh, all of a sudden I noticed um, I just noticed the, the the mood I noticed the room the mood the mood in the room changed um, there was a fog there was a haziness hence why I, like I filmed this with a flashlight and put a spotlight on myself like to give you guys a taste of what I what, what the room felt like with, in my childhood room uh, that I was sleeping in by myself you know um, the master bedroom and everything and I had, I had a king size bed I was right in the middle of it um, I just remember the, uh, feeling this weight on my chest a sudden weight on my chest like like something I've never felt before, like, um, I mean, you know the expression, the weight of the world on your shoulders? Right, but I mean, just think of that, imagine that on your chest, just for like, a moment, like, for, for minutes at a time. Because, I mean, if it's minutes, it's, it only happens for minutes, minutes to, you know, a few, a handful of minutes to 20 minutes at a time for me, the, the, uh, the five experience, the five times that it's happened to me personally. But, um, I've heard horror stories online where it's happened time and time again to people, um, <laughs> For, for countless hours on end, and uh, it, it was like their entire sleep experience, or uh, whatever you want to call it, was old hag phenomenon, and it, it, it never stopped. I was one of the lucky ones, I guess you could say, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, but, um, so, uh, I, I come to you in a way, uh, like, I'm more hyper-aware, my eyes open, and, um, I see, like, uh, these white, pale, veiny, um, d distorted, um, foggy, legs and knees but like knees on my chest and you know I could feel the pressure and I could see them I just couldn't move my body I couldn't move and I couldn't respond I couldn't vocalize and it's um, also similar to sleep paralysis which will be the topic of um, my next video uh, tomorrow around the same time this night of my uh, five-part uh, conspiracy theory series but um so being a 12 year old kid and seeing this and realizing that you're, that you're not um, you're not you're not dreaming you're no longer asleep this is this is some kind of this is some kind of weird place in between the two, and I just um, uh, you know I began to shake and sh and shiver, and that's all I could do when it, when it comes to motion. I could just feel my body shivering, and um, you know, uh, luckily I mean my eyes were in a position to where I could like somewhat do like this. That's why I'm glad I'm standing over this video. I can do like this, look to the side like this, in my peripherals, look down like this, you know, like kind of like do like a full, well I guess you could say 360 of my. Of my uh, from my viewpoint, from my from my standpoint, um, if that makes sense. So um, I'm doing so, and I just realized that like not only are there like a weird, strange, fleshy, dead-looking pair of knees on my chest, there's an actual like made-up geisha-style, um, you know, Asian-inspired geisha-style woman uh, that is like has this menacing look on her face, just bearing down into me with this piercing glare, like staring into my soul, and uh, 
I, I mean, I just, I just, I knew that I was going to die. I, I knew that she was it, whatever you want to call this entity, a demon. I'm not, I'm not really sure with the terminology because I try to dis distance myself from this one because this one really cl hits close to home. I just wanted to make the, um, make this part of my, of my installment series because, um, I just, I just know that it, it, it's a worldwide phenomenon and I've never touched on it on my channel before. And I think this is definitely one of the, one of the, uh, if not the most, uh, paranormal things that happen, um, in our reality, realities, um, that is really, really, like, swept under the floor, like, uh, forefront completely and ignored. And, um, people, like, don't, people get discredited for, um, uh, you know, they, not, they don't, they don't necessarily, uh, get discredited. They just don't get the proper recognition they deserve. And they don't, they don't get necessarily get their stories heard. Um, in the in the in the proper way that I believe that they should do so, if that makes sense. But um, you know, this this, this first encounter happened. Uh, it, la it lasted for uh, what seemed like an eternity, but it was it was most likely from from my twelve year old state of mind. You know, compared to my twenty seven and a half year old state state of mind, uh, it was about two and a half minutes, maybe a little bit less, maybe two minutes exactly. I'm not sure. Um, but in like real time, as compared to like time that you've. Uh, you know, when, when, when you're in fight or flight, uh, and you feel like you're going to die, you know, it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to, uh, keep, um, up with your concept of time and your frame of reference, if you know what I mean. But, um, yeah, so, um, uh, I, I looked up into her eyes at one point, and she never, like, lost eye contact with me. I, I, I absolutely lost eye, con eye contact with her. Like, if this was her, like, and, I, and or if you guys were her, and I was making eye contact with you, you know, like this, like, it would just be for a split second, I would, like, shift my eyes away, you know, like, obviously, because, because she loved it, or it loved it, the, the entity loved it, the, the demon loved it, um, whoever this was loved, um, my fear, and they fed off my fear, and they fed off, um, my anxiety, and they fed off my vulnerability as being, not only being a small child, but also being very, uh, naive for my age, and being, um, underdeveloped for my age, um, I was very intelligent for my age, and always have been an, an intelligent person, but, um, Whenever it comes to the paranormal, I think um, sometimes your intelligence, your your intelligence factor, really doesn't matter. It's it's not really um, it doesn't really affect um, what uh, how you react to an experience like this, <clears throat> because this would it, it, you know God forbid it actually happened to me again, even as an adult, even um you know if it happened let's say it happened uh, after I make this video when I go to bed shortly later, um. Uh, you know, I would have the, I would have a very similar reaction, like, just not, there's just the uncontrollable fear, not being able to move, it, it being very similar to sleep, sleep paralysis, and it making me think of that, and, 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 and then, you know, it's, it's the two mixed together, because I've experienced both, and, um, it's, uh, it, and, you know, like, the, whenever the experience was finally over, and I felt the pressure lift from my chest, um, you know, it was like, it was just, the, it, it felt like I could just like, obviously I felt like I could, I could take a deep breath again, but it just felt like, um, all my worries were gone. The second that she disintegrated, however you want to put it, um, that's how it looked to me. She kind of disintegrated and the fog dissipated. And, um, she, uh, once, once the entity was gone from the room, I took a sigh of relief. I looked around the, you know, the veil or the veil was, you know, no longer thin or lifted. And it was closed again, and it was, and it got thicker again. And um, you know, uh, I, I started watching Chelsea Handler again on Chelsea lately, and um, you know, I began, um, I just began to relax, and it, it obviously threw me for a loop. But um, you know, I woke my mom, I woke my mother up, um, you know, and I, I was hesitant. I waited probably about an hour um, on a school night uh, to tell my mom what had actually happened. And because, you know, my mom is, um, is very, is very, very sensitive to paranormal things as well. And I think that's where I get, uh, my, cre my creativity and, um, my sensitivity and my hyper awareness, um, <clears throat> uh, to these sorts of things from, is my mother. Her, um, you know, her name is Stacy. uh, I'm not going to mention her last name. Um, it's not like Owsley or like mine or any anything like that anymore, but, um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, sh I, I, you know, but it, it, that's, beside, that, that's totally beside the point is what I'm trying to say. But, um, no, she, uh, you know, I, I, I woke her up and, uh, you know, luckily like for, you know, I didn't have to wake my dad up or anything cause he had to wake up really early for work, like within three hours or so when I woke, woke my mom up, my mom luckily fell asleep on the couch, which was in close proximity to, um, the master bedroom that my parents had given me, like, uh, because I was so responsible and, you know, they felt like I was so grown up and everything and it made me feel really good about myself. 
But um, so I, I, my mom's sleep, my mother is asleep on the couch, and I'm like, mom, mom, mom. And at the time, I called her by her first name. I was like, Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. And um, I'll mention this in the next video, in my sleep paralysis video, as to why I began to call her, as why I started to call her uh, Stacy as opposed to mom. But um, I was like, Stacy, Stacy, wake up, wake up, wake up. And um, sh and she she woke up or whatever. And my mom and I are the same way. If you wake us up all of a sudden, like we're freaked the fuck out. Like we're like, what? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! They're like, you, there's no waking us up, waking um, her or I up gently. It's it's not a possibility. So I mean, I knew that I was gonna startle her, and that you know that wasn't my intention. That wasn't my goal, and I felt really bad about it. But I, I knew that I had to tell her because I know that she would believe me because she took she's told me about paranormal experiences that she had had, um, before. No, nothing you know that. Nothing that even pales in comparison to this or my UFO abduction story that I mentioned in my um, first installment of my five-part um, conspiracy theory series or whatever. But, um, you know, uh, I, t I told her, I was like, Mom, um, the best way I can describe this is an old Asian woman, ghost, demon, um, angel, and, you know, or other, I'm not sure, um, was, was physically on me. I felt her weight on me. And... Uh, and uh, you know, I was obviously still shaken up, and I was crying like I was crying like a baby. And I'm surprised that I didn't get more emotional now, um, even telling the story. Uh, but um, you know, I, t I just told her that uh, I, t I, just, I told her everything that ha that had happened, and I described the veininess and everything. And um, you know, so like uh, we had just gotten um, our first laptop as a family at the time, because I, I believe it was like 2005 or 2006, I believe. We had a desktop previously. We had a laptop, and we had we had just gotten um, DSL, which was the fastest internet that we had had. So that given uh, that gives you guys an idea of the t of the time of what time of what, what time it happened. There you go. <laughs> we still had AOL and everything, but um, but DSL. So my mom's like, okay, calm down. You know, we talk about it, and I and I tell her about it. We calm down. We start watching like uh, the Golden Girls box set that we had, like. We start talking about it, calming down, and, and like just you know that's just playing in the background, and we're just really having a conversation. And um, she was was a stay-at-home mother at that point, so it wasn't like she had to get up uh, to go to work or anything. Excuse me, <clears throat> ginger ale moment. So um, it's not like she had to go to work or anything. So um, we talked about it for probably like I don't know, at least um, right up until my dad had to go to work um that morning, and um. So her, it was her idea. She was like, "Let's let's just like, what do you think about just looking it up on like on like Ask Jeeves?" Because you know, like Google wasn't as popular then. So like we we like Ask Jeeves or whatever. Or I think it's just Ask.com now. That's beside the point. But um, we just asked Jeeves or whatever, and we said um, I I don't remember exactly like how she worded it, but my mom was the one at the I think at the uh, keyboard, and uh, I believe it was just like um, like uh, geisha woman paranormal. Something like that. Basically, those words. Maybe, maybe, maybe even verbatim. Maybe that's exactly what we searched. I'm not sure. It's been so long. I mean, maybe she'd have a better memory. I'll have to discuss that with her. Maybe I can touch on that in my in my video tomorrow around the same time. I'll I'll let you guys know. But um, so that's where we, you know, the first thing we see. The ver I mean, for thousands and thousands and thousands of pages on, you know, and um, uh, you know, Reddit's and Wiki links and and stuff, Wiki leaks and stuff before they were even, you know, popular. Like we read those and just different message boards and Tumblr posts and. Things like that, and MySpace posts, and things that were, um, you know, y Yahoo, uh, message boards, etc. And it was just nothing but old hag phenomenon. And um, uh, once again, you guys, if you haven't heard of it, like research it for yourselves. It's something that's happened for, for thousands and thousands of years. You know, as long as far as if you want, if you'd ask me, I would tell you that it's happened as long as like humans have been simulated in the simulated experience. Is the is my is my honest take on it? Like that's my conspiracy, that's my opinion, that's my theory allegedly, and that's what I, that's what brings the root, that's what brings the truest to me. But um, so like you know, um, she reads it, and like we both just we both just all of a sudden got chills, and uh, you know, we were like um, you know, that's exactly what happened to you. Like I mean, it's not that she doubted me. Like we just both wanted to know, like uh, just for like our own safety and sa uh, like the safety of like the rest of the family, like to make sure that they. But, you know, that the there wasn't, like, a demon or a ghost in the house, or for instance, like, that was going to, like, try to hurt somebody. There, there, there was, it was phys physically going to hurt me. You know, luckily, it's, like, there were no scratches, there, were, there was no damage from where, like, um, this entity's body, quote-unquote body, had touched, touched me or anything like that. But, um, uh, you know, we, learned, we figured out what it was, and, um, you know, uh, the, the next night, it happened again. And I, w I woke my mother up, and we, talk we talked about it, and, um... It happened like two weeks later, you know, uh, two nights, two nights in a row, and you know that's it happened four times. Like I said, I'm I'm so thankful that it happened within the you know the time frame that it happened because 
I mean, at least like I had, uh, you know, we had my, my my mother. My mother was kind enough to help me research what it was and find out what it was. So whenever I was going through those like horrific moments, like the the, the three following, that like um not. I mean, I'm not by no means am I saying oh it was like it wasn't even scary. It was absolutely horrifying. It was terrifying. It like it def it defined my childhood in a way, and it really it really put a damper on things in my for my emotional state after even afterwards. And we'll talk about that in my sleep paralysis video that's next or whatever. But um. Are you guys familiar with this with this kind of thing, old hack phenomenon? Um, uh, is this the first you're hearing of it? I'd really like to know. Um, uh, if you've had this experience, is it is it exactly like I described it? Because uh, nine 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 out of ten of the stories that I've heard, I mean, um, are pretty similar to the one that I I just told you guys. Uh, I really would like to know. Um, your honest and um, constructive criticism and feedback um is my favorite part of being a YouTuber and. You know, it's not about trolling videos and, shout, and you know, shout out videos and things like that. It's just, it's not about that. You know, that was a mistake. I'll admit it. It was, it was absolutely a mistake. And I'll address that later on once again. But um, I'm Steesburger. Uh, and what does Steesburger love? It's cheeseburgers. I love you guys for watching. Thanks so much. And like I said, um, each video this week is going to be at least 20 to 30 minutes long. And we're at the 21 minute marker right now. So once again, I was right. I love you guys. Bye.